Hi everyone, let's talk about Manhattan. So I'm always interested to go back when I have the chance and, you know, because I'm relatively new to the hobby, it's only been four or five years or so, you know, I don't know all of these games that won the, you know, the prestigious Spiel des Jahres, you know, in the 90s and things. I've got Tickle, I think that was 1999. But anyway, yeah, so that was what, what enticed me to this and it looks beautiful as well. I haven't seen what the old version was like, but this has got the beautiful, you know, see-through plastic blocks, hopefully kind of popping up on the screen somewhere and uh, it's also got artwork by Jackie Davis who does beautiful beautiful artwork uh, did artwork for it would really help to do research on these things wouldn't it did artwork for Ex Libris that I remember recently and also Stockpile as well just beautiful beautiful artwork and yeah so so the game itself it's a really really good gateway game just you can see if you, if you saw any other playthrough just really simple you have a hand of four cards, they relate to the squares that you can put them in, but you can choose which city you want to go on. You can either put a new skyscraper out yourself, bolster a position that you're already in, or if you have the same number of stories, you can take over someone else's skyscraper. So it's all about area majority in different ways. You know, you want the majority of the city in general, but that's only worth two points. You want, you know, it's a point for each individual skyscraper that I've just uh, demolished now. Uh, each individual skyscraper that's out and yeah there's always this back and forth this push and pull between you know trying to take over the different skyscrapers because that will then affect you know the highest skyscraper bonus at the end of every round and it will also affect the majority as well if you can take someone's skyscraper off it's not just a swing in now i've got one more point and you've got one fewer point for the change in skyscraper that could change the little majority thing that's going on in each of the cities as well and so yeah a really really simple system that works beautifully and you can see why it's a, it was a different time for the award but you can see why it's one of the winners and why it would make a really really great gateway game for two players i think this is kind of known anyway it's well area control in itself isn't at its best with two players because you know it's it's just it's zero sum it's it's always you know a bigger swing it always makes sense for these things whether somebody gets uh, the bonus or not at the end, when I was thinking about the tallest tower, it doesn't matter whether we both get it or neither of us get it. Since there's only two of us, it doesn't matter. And yeah, it it seems I would like. It's it's cool that you get to you play as two colors that you can use to your advantage as well. You know, it might not help you to get the overall majority by putting your second colour in a city, but you might be able, as happened in the playthrough, you might be able to take control of a skyscraper with the colour you don't want to reduce the number that your opponent has, so your good colour now is in the strongest position, if you get what I mean, to break a tie. Uh, they can be used in cool little ways, but you often end up kind of divided between the city blocks because you might as well. You want competition between you know a colour you're strong in you don't, you don't want to you know, ruin your majority by introducing too much of your second colour in there in a two-player game. And I would like that, obviously I've got no idea how it would affect the balance of the game, so it's just throwing out random, <laughs> untested ideas. But it would be nice if the board was a bit tighter as well for two players to kind of... You do spread out across the cities because you might as well just to get the majorities, but it does end up where you know the competition is concentrated in a few of them and it would be nice if you were kind of forced into doing that a little bit sooner but that's at the two player count and it's you know as with pretty much i can't really think of uh, area control games we've played and thought were really really great at two as soon as you put a third player into the mix everything changes because there are now three different people all vying for these things not just you know that we've got four different colors but really you know it's it's just it's just two players playing against each other even though we control those different colors we've got the same attitude as soon as you play a, put a third player into the mix you know as happens in you know a lot of games you can be fighting over something with someone and just letting another person take control in another area. And yeah, if, if three people are involved in the fight for a skyscraper, not only is it going to probably race to be the tallest skyscraper, but it's going to be a lot more interesting working out uh, when it happens. And yeah, get those uh, get those lucky last minute uh, takeovers of the buildings too. That That is a factor in it where it is only a light gateway game and you know there is... A, a fair dependence on luck based on the cards that you have you know if your precious skyscraper gets taken away from you you might never get a card again that relates to that particular square and you just have to concentrate on something else it's not you know uh, a huge deal it's just inherent in the game it's something to be aware of but yeah it's definitely 
on the lighter side, just a really fast, smooth, simple, you know, scramble to take control of all of these various things. And majority's come and go control of the skyscrapers changes, you know, from, from turn to turn, never mind round by round. And yeah, you just want to hope to be on top by the end. But yeah, check out the playthrough and see if it would be one you'd be interested in. That is Manhattan. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.